but I had more blood. I didn't know fun. I had. I didn't know I had that much blood. The doctors <laughs> later told me that the ear is a place that is uh, a very bloody place if you're going to get hit. But uh, in this case, it was probably the best alternative you could even think about because it went at the right angle, and uh, you know it was uh, it was a hard hit. It was very. Uh, I guess you would say surreal, but it wasn't surreal. You know, I was telling somebody you have instances like this or like a lot less than this where you feel it's a surreal situation. And I never felt that way. I, I knew immediately that it was a bullet. I knew immediately that it was at the ear. Yeah. And because uh, it, you know, it hit very hard, but hit the ear. And I also heard people shout bullets bullets uh, you know get down get down because i you know i moved down pretty nicely pretty quickly and we had bullets flying right over my head after i went down so i'm glad i went down the the bigger miracle was that i was looking in the exact direction of the shooter and so it hit it hit me at an angle that was uh, far less destructive than any other angle so that was the miracle that was yeah. for those people Split that second. don't believe in god i think yeah, we got to all start thinking about that you have to uh, you know, I'm I'm a believer. Now I'm more of a believer, I think. And a lot of people have said that to me. A lot of great people have said that to me, actually. But it was uh, it was amazing that I happened to be turned just at that perfect yeah. angle. And uh, all because I put down a, a chart on immigration that showed that the numbers were so great. I, I love that chart even more now. I mean, maybe it's a sign. It. <laughs> maybe yeah. that's a sign, you know. <laughs> it's an immigration sign. <laughs> you, you highlighted a, a serious issue. And, yeah. and at that moment... <laughs> That's the, the, right. the bullet, Mister. You know, hit your ear, but 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 you know, Mister. 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 Your head. I mean, your. Well, you know, the the, the amazing yeah. thing is that uh, the sign. I said, bring down that sign on immigration, and it was literally about an eighth of a second where it would be good, and and after that, it was going to yeah. be a disaster, no matter which which way you were facing. But it just had that that perfect angle, which was exactly yeah. at this shooter. Very sad situation. Such a sad situation. As you know, we lost somebody that was great, Corey, yeah. who a firefighter, a, a, a great gentleman, a great, a great trumper. He was a, a just a fantastic family and a fantastic man. And a friend of mine came up, Elon, and said, "I'd like to give uh, the family some kind of uh, help." And I said, oh, "That's great." He said, "Do you mind?" I said, "I don't mind at all." And he wrote out a check for a million dollars, gave gave it to the wife, and you know. Uh, she said, this is really nice, but I'd rather have my husband back, which is a nice thing for sure. somebody to say, to be honest. She's she's great. The family is great. And we raised a lot of yeah. money for them and for uh, two other gentlemen were are unbelievable people also. They were hit really badly. They thought they were not going to make it, and they did. The doctors in the Butler area, I tell you, they were incredible. They saved the two, and uh, they were really hit tough, both of them, equally. Yeah. Uh, and we thought, yeah. we, I, my first question was because I heard bullets flying over me. And I said, how many people were killed? Because we had a massive crowd there, a tremendous yeah. thousands and thousands of people. And, and there was no land. I mean, it was just, it was all people. So I said, how many people have been killed? Because I knew there were other shots being fired. And, sure. and they said, uh, we don't know yet, but some people have been badly hurt. And uh, I have to give the uh, Secret Service sniper they call him or sharpshooter but sniper yeah. because he didn't know there was a problem uh, he's been he's an extraordinary shot obviously and he didn't know there was a problem and he yeah. was able to pick it all out within five seconds and he used one bullet from very far away i guess probably about 400 yards the shooter was 130 but he was on the uh, yeah. uh, he was on the opposite side of the field and the podium and he saw the the smoke and the flame from the gun immediately recognized it and immediately took a shot. And it was one perfect shot from very far away. And if he, if he didn't yeah. do that, Elon, he would have, I mean, if he would have, a lot of people, a lot more people have been, could have been sure. badly hurt and killed. So yeah, I, I, I have to take my hat off to him because that's also a surreal, you know, he's been with them for 23 years. And there's, yeah. he's never had anything like this. And all of a sudden he has to act. And it's a very tough thing to sure. act and to be shooting somebody. But he saw the uh, he saw the gun, saw the smoke, saw the flame from the gun, 
very far away. I obviously has very good eyes. He's got very good vision, which I assume you yeah. have to have in that particular work. But he uh, he <laughs> took aim very quickly, and it was they say it was approximately five seconds from long range, yeah. one bullet. If that didn't happen, because yeah. the shooter had a lot of bullets, he had a lot of a lot of cartridges sure. up there with him. So, well, been very... I mean, I mean that that, that that's clearly uh, uh, you know um, you know he was he was very confident in taking that shot uh, to stop the the assass the attempted assassination. Um, uh, but but I mean that does seem to be I, I mean some pretty significant failings um, elsewhere in the system. Like there's just no way that like how on earth does a shooter get on a roof 130 yards away? Um, that seems crazy. Um, I think most people like are what, people are wondering how that how on earth could such a thing happen. Well, you know, I view it as two ways. Uh, there should have been nobody on the roof. Uh, there were people yeah. because there were so many tens of thousands of people there. There were people that were seeing him. And there was one woman with a red shirt and uh, right. Trump all over it. And, she, and she's screaming, and that guy's got a gun. You know, you saw it probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a no, guy up there with it's a gun. Just, I mean, it's, it's like, I'm just, I'm just, I guess, I mean, for, for my part, and I think probably many members of the public are wondering how the heck are, you know, basically p people wandering by it, pointing out there's a guy on the roof with a gun. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and they're seeing it, but uh, somehow that's it's not being addressed. Um, that that does seem yeah, crazy. Well, they they're going to learn from this. The uh, communication between the local police, who sort of had an idea, and then ultimately a man lifted himself up to the roof, could barely do it because you know he was pulling himself up, and yeah. he saw the man with the gun. The man with the gun pointed the gun at him. He thought he was probably going to get shot. But, you know, he was like pulling himself up. And because of that, he couldn't get to his gun. And he fell down, actually very badly hurt his uh, leg, his ankle. I hear very badly. Okay. But but he fell down. And he did, you know, from what I understand, he did say there's a guy up there with a gun. And the the shooting started very quickly after that. I think it, I think it forced the shooter to go maybe quicker. You know, he was supposed to be a very good shot. Yeah. My sons, uh, Don and Eric, they, they can't believe what happened, but they said from 130 yards, a bad shot would hit that target almost every time. They said it's like in golf, yeah. sinking a two-foot putt. Yeah, it's, it's not a, hard, it's not a no, tough shot. It's not a, it's um, not a long shot. The uh, Secret Service person had the long shot. He had a, you know, triple the yeah. distance, actually. So, uh, you know, it's, it was a, a terrible thing. It, look... Uh, it, it's hard. I have to say this about the Secret Service. When I went down, and, you know, I went down based on, I think they're screaming, uh, but other people also, because people saw this happen. You know, you had so many people. One of the miracles was that nobody ran. I mean, if, if a gun goes off, the crowd yeah. control people showed, showed us this. When guns go off, and it does happen in stadiums at a soccer match or some kind of a match, everybody flees. They call it a stampede, like cattle. But everybody, and a lot yeah. of people get killed with those stampedes. Uh, we had sure. more people than you'd have at, you know, some of these matches or, or these games. And uh, nobody left. You know, you had a, a small group behind us in the grandstand, and that was full. And you look at it as it was taking place. And normally they'd be running. They didn't leave. They saw that I was hurt. They saw a lot of blood. And they saw that I went down. And it's almost like they wanted to be with me. Well, out front, you had thousands, tens of thousands of people. You, as far as the eye could see, you had people in Butler, as far as the eye could see. And, and, uh, yeah. and a lot of press, too. There were you know, many cameras on watching this. It's what made, makes it so different, because normally things happen that aren't good, but you never have a picture of it. Here we have all these cameras shooting it. So, yeah. uh, you know, sort of amazing. But one of the interesting things was that you didn't have anybody flee. You didn't have anybody stampede. Sure. Nobody. And there were some people behind me, they stood up and they're looking like, you know, I mean, I'll tell you, you want to have, yeah, you yeah. want to have them in a foxhole with you. I want to meet some of those people sure, because sure. it's so different from what you heard. But so, so I was down, but the secret service guys, yeah. there were bullets flying right over my head. You could hear them go whizzing. And, yeah. and these guys, 
came jumping on top of me and a young lady, Kate, uh, would jump. They, they moved so fast. And let me tell you, that took tremendous courage. Now, there was a lack of coordination. Uh, there was, you know, obviously everybody understands that somebody, that, that building should have been covered. And uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, that I was think, the I big thing. Like, I, mean, I, I mean, looking at the, the aerial views, I, that building would be like the number one spot for a sniper. I mean, it's like, it's like the, if you were to pick, like, what is the favorite place? What, if you, so if the goal is to assassinate, what's your favorite spot? That building. Uh, the You're right. That building would be number one. That would have been the spot. Um, it's like you can, you can ask for a better no, location. It's like no, number one. that would have been the spot. Um, you know what people think yeah. is when the uh, local policeman, who, by the way, uh, was, you know, he really, uh, he did what he was supposed to do. He couldn't hold on any longer. And then when he got yeah. his head just peeking above, this guy standing there with a gun at his head. And when he fell down, again, hurt his ankle very badly, but he was making the calls. But what happened is the firing took place very soon. So what yeah. they think is that this guy ran to his site, which he had all planned out with the gun. Uh, he ran to the site and he started shooting fast. And maybe that's why he, uh, well, he sort of missed. I mean, you know, he... Uh, yeah, he, but he as got you said, me, you, but you it could have been. It I mean, could have been. Uh, could have been a yeah. much bigger problem. But he totally would have hit if 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 you hadn't turned your head. So, like you know, there was a, it it was a, a very near thing. It was so, a miracle. If I hadn't um, turned my head, yeah, I would not be talking to you right now. As much as I like you, exactly, I would not. Yeah, I would <laughs> well, not be talking. Yeah, to you. Yeah, talking to me from another realm, perhaps. Yeah, that's um, right. We'd be talking from a so. different place. But uh, it was a, it was a. You know, it was a very terrible experience. The The Butler Hospital, they did such a great job. Uh, the doctors were so good. Everybody was so good. There was there was a mistake. If, if somebody knew, because people were hearing, that, you know, there was just a bad feeling that there was somebody was around. You know that story now. It's been... Yeah, well. yeah. And yeah. if somebody could have said, because they've oftentimes said, you know, like there'd be a lightning storm or something, because I've done, I think, over 300. I think I did a lot more than that, but... We did a lot, and oftentimes they'll say, sir, could you wait 10 minutes, please? Sir, could you wait 20 minutes? There's a storm overhead or lightning or something, right? And yeah. that happens often, yeah. and this would have been a perfect time for that to have happened, but it, it, <laughs> yeah. didn't, it didn't get coordinated. That was the problem. Well, uh, it was, uh, your, your, I think, uh, your, your um, actions in the, in the heat of a fire and, you know, like, what I find admirable there was that you you can't fake bravery under such circumstances. The courage is instinctual, or it is not. It's not a rehearsed action. And so I just want to say that uh, I think a lot of people admire your 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 courage under fire there. And well, um, yeah, so thank you very yeah. much. I I appreciate it. I didn't I don't think I didn't think of it. I just wanted to get up, and I wanted to stand up. I wanted to let people know. You know, I felt I was good when when they were. Uh, on top of me, covering me, actually, very much covering me and, and very bravely. But uh, I wanted to get up. I said, I want to get up. And uh, they wanted, you know, they had they have everything there. They have, uh, they wanted stretcher. I didn't like the stretcher. And I knew I was hit in the ear, but I knew I wasn't hit anywhere else. They felt I was hit someplace else because yeah. it was such a, a lot of blood. And they were sure that I was hit someplace else. And they were saying, sir, you, you, you were hit in more than the ear. I said, nope. I was hit in the ear. I want to get up. Let me get up. And so we, I got up, and the crowd didn't know what to think. I mean, this was so, so many people, and they did, you could see they were confused. They didn't know what to think. And I wanted to let them know I was okay. It was very important for me to let yeah. them know that. And they went wild. You, you've seen the after. They didn't go wild when yeah. I got up because they didn't know, was I alive? You really couldn't tell. When I stood up, before the hand, before the, you know, the fist in the air, uh, they didn't know if I was alive. Nobody did. And uh, when I put the fist up, they were, they were just relieved and happy and thrilled. And uh, the place went crazy. It was pretty amazing. Yeah. It was a, it was a terrible well, it was, thing, but it was, it was incredibly, 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 incredibly moving. Yeah. Um, well, and, and, and I mean, speaking of the, 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 the sort of slide that got you to turn that, 
uh, saved her life, really, uh, was, was the illegal immigration uh, slide. Right. Maybe this, right. <laughs> maybe this is worth talking about about that. It was, it was <laughs> that slide. That slide saved right. her life. No, the illegal immigration <laughs> saved my life. You're right, but it, was, <laughs> it had to be at that exact <laughs> angle. <laughs> I mean, that's that's a great one. <laughs> saved, saved by illegal immigration. You know the the incredible thing though, when you talk about the odds, you had to be exactly at that angle, but but. The incredible yeah. thing is that the chart, I used it less than 20% of the time. It was just a moment. Yeah. It's always on my left, never my right. And it's always at the end of the speech. So yeah. here we have it. It's on the right, not the left. It's at the beginning, not the end. And even the people that put it up, they were unprepared. And, and they did a great job. They got it up immediately, fortunately. But I looked to the right and, and, the, bullet, and the bullet came whizzing by, hitting my ear. Uh, so it was amazing. But when you think of the odds of that and, yeah, you, yeah. you know, that, that normally you wouldn't use it. Normally I wouldn't have the thing. And then, you know, yeah. it would have been a very different story. It's, it's very much, I, I say an act of God, it's a miracle that it happened and I'm honored sure. by it. I'm honored by it. Well, well, uh, what, 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 were you, what were you about to say about illegal immigration before you were rudely interrupted? Well, bullet? I was going to say how good the numbers were. By the way, we're going back to Butler, and we're going to Great. go back in October. We're all set up, and we're the people are fantastic in Butler. It's a big, it's a great area. Great, these are incredible people. Uh, like the three that, in the case of Corey killed, and the other two, the the families are. I got to know them a little bit, and. The families are great, but we're going back to Butler, and uh, I think I'll probably start by saying, uh, as I was saying, yeah, as, you know, yeah, prior to saying, being exactly. so horribly so, interrupted, yeah. but yeah, so uh, rudely interrupted by an yeah, assassination so, uh, attempt. But um, no, but the chart. <laughs> some people have have no manners. Elon, the chart <laughs> was just a chart that in my last week we had the best uh, illegal uh, immigration numbers, meaning stopping. Uh, it was at the lowest. You've seen the chart. It's become a, quite a famous yeah, chart. Yeah. But that was yeah. the lowest yeah. point ever recorded. It was a really, um, I mean, I was very proud of those numbers. And then you see what happened with these people, uh, Kamala and Joe. You see what happened. They just let it go. I had remain in Mexico policies. I had all these different policies that were so good. Uh, guys like Tom Holman and uh, Brandon Judd from Border Patrol. I, all these are all people that they've been on television. They says the best numbers we've ever had. We had so many different checks, catch and release in Mexico, not the United. We had catch and release in the United States. We had it in Mexico. We had so many things. We had things where if people, many people come in there, they have contagious diseases. We had everything passed. If you have a contagious disease, I'm sorry. But we can we cannot allow you into the country. <laughs> so we were setting literally yeah. records, and uh, I all I was doing is showing that, and I I use it sometimes. Sure. And in this case, I'm glad I used it. I can tell you that. But but they were fantastic numbers. But I'm going to sleep with that chart always. I'm going to I'll be sleeping with that chart. That chart was uh, was very important, very important for a lot of reasons. Well, I mean. I mean, would it be accurate to would it be accurate to say that you're supportive of legal immigration, um, but that we, but we also need to shut down illegal immigration uh, and especially unvetted illegal yes. immigration because you you know and 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 this, that's not the same as saying that everyone who's an illegal immigrant is bad. In fact, um, I, I think most people who are illegal immigrants are actually good. But but you can't tell the difference unless there's a solid vetting of who comes across the border. Does is, is does that? Does that actually, actually represent your position? I, I say okay. it very simply. They have to come in legally. They have to be checked. Yeah. Because, look, Kamala was the border czar. Now she's denying it. Everything that I do, <laughs> she's, she's saying yeah. she was strong on the border. Uh, we're going to be strong. Well, she doesn't have to say it. She could close it up right now. They could they could do things right now. It's, it's horrible. Uh no tax on tips. And all of a sudden, she's making a speech. And saying, there will be no tax on tips. I said that months ago. And by the way, they had just the opposite. You know, they had not only tax on tips, but they hired 88,000 IRS agents, and many of them were assigned to go get waitresses and caddies and all of this on tips. They have a policy. They had a policy that they were really going to go after you and were really harassing people horribly. 
And then all of a sudden for politics, she says, you know, she comes out with with what I said, which I think is terrible. And I think it's also hitting them very hard. These people are fake. Now they're also saying they did a good job in the border. We had the worst numbers in the history of the world, not of our country. There's never been a country in history that has had a catastrophe like this. We've had, I believe, and I think you believe this too, you know, you hear 12 yeah. million, 13. I believe it's over 20 million people came into our country, many yeah. coming from jails, from prisons, from from uh, mental institutions, or a bigger version of that is yeah. insane asylums, and many are terrorists. And I'll tell you what, they're, they're coming not just from South America, they're coming from Africa, they're coming from all over the world, they're coming from Asia, yeah. they're coming from the Middle East, they're coming from countries that are uh, stupidly and horribly bombing Israel October 7th. They're coming from all over the world. They, and, and you know, you look at, it's so sad October 7th because it should have never happened. Yeah. It's so sad sure. when you look at Ukraine, it should have never happened. We have a defective yeah. government. These are defective people and they're not people that should be running it. But where you see it the best is the border because you had you have millions of people coming in a month and then she gets up and she tries to pretend like she's going to do something. She had three and a half years. And by the way, they have another five months that they can do something, but they yeah. won't do anything. It's all talk. She's yeah. incompetent and he's incompetent. And frankly, I think that she's more incompetent than he is. And that's saying something because he's not too good. Yeah, no, I, I think it, it's it is essential to have a secure border. I mean, you're, you're, you're really not a country unless Correct. you have a secure border. Um, and, and secure uh, elections. Too. You know, yeah, absolutely. Secure elections. And uh, so, so it's, it's, it's just essential to have a real border or, or, or we, we can't function as a country and our service, you know, our central services are, are being overwhelmed in a lot of cities. Um, and, uh, and I, but I, I as, as we were talking about earlier, I think uh, having, um, a legal immigration pro process that is uh, smooth and efficient and done well. And I, you know, speaking as someone who is a legal immigrant, um, and it, I think that that, I mean, I, like one way to think of it is who do you want on your team? Um, you know, who like who do you want on Team America? And and I think we want to just say, okay, we we, we want to uh, let in people who are going to, you know, be great contributors to. Um, our society and to our economy right. and, uh, you know, and who do you want on the team? And it's, and, and it's not to say that like, in, in my opinion, actually, I'd say like probably most of the illegal immigrants actually are, are, are actually good, hardworking people. That's my opinion. Um, but some are not. And, uh, and, and you just have this sort of adverse selection process where, um, you know, if, if, if somebody's, uh, you know, if if somebody is like, a, you know, um, has a career in in theft or robbery, um, I I don't understand what's taken them so long to get here, um, because we are such a target rich environment. Um, I mean, you know, why aren't they? Why aren't more people who have a career in, you know, bad things coming here sooner? Because it's, I mean, it's a piece of cake to go rob, uh, you know, houses in uh, L.A. or New York. Uh, compared to other parts of the world, and um, and and in, in a lot of places in America, if 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 you try to stop the person who's robbing you, you'll be arrested. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. it's, it's it's right. I mean, what what's happening with crime? And our police are so good, but they're not allowed to do their job. But I have to tell you, Elon, they're I hate not. to say it because it's such a downer to say it. I hate to say it. I hate it. But. Uh, you have a lot of people that just shouldn't be. I think it's a much bigger number than you think. They're allowing, think again, right. they're yeah. allowing people from their jails. And if you were running one of these countries where they're coming from, you would have had all of them. As an example, uh, Venezuela, their crime is down 72%. They're taking their drug dealers. They're taking, frankly, their prisoners. They're emptying out their prisons. They're taking uh, their criminals, their murderers, their rapists, and their they're delivering yeah. them into. But the, that's what that's what Castro, Castro did. Yeah, that, well, he did know? on a much smaller scale. Yeah. You know, it was a much smaller yeah. scale. But this is a massive scale because this is being done worldwide. But here's what's happening: crime all over the world is down. And wait till you see the <laughs> numbers that we have. You know, these this is migrant crime. This is crime that's that's going to be. Yeah. And I saw it today in New York where somebody was knifed 
where they uh, raped the girlfriend of a man that stood there watching in New York in one of the shelters and uh, started sure. pulling out the knives and bad things happened today. But this is happening every day. These are rough people. These are people that are in jail for yeah. murder and all sorts of things. And they're releasing them into our country. And they're telling them, if you come back, we're going to kill you. We're going to give you the death penalty or kill you. So they don't want to come back. But these are rough people. Yeah. These, are, these are criminals that make our criminals look like nice people. And it's horrible what they're doing. And, and she's in charge of it because, you know, now she's trying to say she sure. had nothing to do with it. And she's such a liar because she was called the border czar the first day and it was on the headlines of every newspaper. She's the border czar. And she never even went there. She went to one location, which had nothing to do with where the problem is. You know, she went in and out, right. I guess, because she was getting a lot of pressure, yeah, but yeah. had nothing to do with the problem. Yeah. Is. But she was well, the well, border czar and you people yeah, can't yeah. allow them to get away with their disinformation campaign. Now she's trying to say that uh, she wasn't uh, she wasn't really involved. And uh, the whole thing is horrible. She was totally in charge. She could have shut the border down without him. He didn't know what he was doing anyway, so he wouldn't have even known yeah. what happened. You could shut the border down. He yeah. wouldn't even know the difference. But uh, the fact is that she was border czar. But if, you don't have to call yes. her that. The fact is you could just call her. She was in charge of the border. And the border was the worst right. ever. It's it's simply not working. No, it's, it's I horrible. Mean, whether whether it's by whether it's by whether it's a question of of intention or competence, either way, we 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 don't have a secure border, and we have people streaming over like it looks like a world World War Z zombie apocalypse at times. And you know, sometimes you you you, you got to sort of wonder like, is it real or not? So. I, you know, because you see things, and you're like, is it real? I, I, so I went to the border at Eagle Pass, and I saw for myself in Texas, and I was like, okay, it's real. This, I'm like seeing this in real time. I actually posted the video like just live. I just, I just flew there one day and just to see, hey, is this, is this, is this made up or real? And I'm, I, I'm just seeing people stream across the border, and um, and I have to say, you know, at least the people that I saw did not look friendly. Um, you know, these, so these yeah, people, people, people can look at my video and say, yeah. hey, you know, these people, these yeah. people look friendly. I, I don't look super friendly. So these are people that um, Elon would not be the same man if he had to walk across the street and look these people in the eye. These are rough people. These are really rough people coming across. And I know rough people. And these are people that we don't want in our country. And, you know, the caravans are coming in and they're putting and, and who's doing this is the heads of the countries. And. You would be doing yeah. it, and so would I. And everyone would say, oh, what a terrible thing to say. The fact is, it's brilliant for them because they're taking all of their uh, bad people, really bad people. And I hate to say this, the reason the numbers are much bigger than you would think is they're also taking their non-productive people. Now, these aren't people that will kill you. We have enough of them. But these are people that are non-productive. They... They are just not productive. I mean, for whatever reason, they're not yeah, workers yeah. or they don't want to work or whatever. And these countries are getting rid of non-productive people in the caravans in many cases. And they're also getting rid of their murderers and their drug dealers and the people that are really yeah. brutal people. And they're coming into our country yeah. at levels that have never been seen before. And I saw an ad just before I got on the air. I'm, I'm walking over here and I saw an ad by Kamala saying how she is going to provide border security. Where has she been for three and a half years? For three and a half years, yeah, no, no, this, this, we have 20 million this, this, people this, this, for it. Is, it's a terrible Yeah, thing. I think this, frankly, I, I think this is a fundamental existential issue for the United States. Um, and if we have another four more years of, of open borders, and it's going to be even worse, with another four more years, it's going to be even worse than it's been for the past, uh, you know, three and a half years. Uh, I'm not sure we've got a country. You don't have a country at left. That point. Elon, if they get in, you will have 50 to 60 million people from all over the world, not South America only. You know, we think of South America, we think of Honduras and El Salvador, Guatemala and Mexico, you know, the four. But it's not that. It's everywhere. They're coming in from yeah, everywhere. It, 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 and I had to stay in Mexico. Yeah, I think uh, this, is a, this is a super important yeah. point. Like, people, it's like, or basically, or when I went down there, I was like, well, where are people from? It's like, it's, it's like almost no one was from Mexico. No, Mexico it's, less. It's just, it's just, it's just the, the border. Earth. It's just the border with Mexico. But the people coming in, it's, it's, it's Earth, the rest of Earth. <laughs> and, and America is, is only, you know, about four, four or five percent of the population of Earth. 
it, it would only take a few percent of the rest of Earth to overwhelm everything. In we're the already US. overwhelmed, so, Elon. It's we're overwhelmed. You had to see the news tonight about New York, New York, and I love that place. And what they're doing to it is horrible. What they're doing to it, and all the courts do is they yeah. try and focus on Trump. Okay, then let's focus on Trump, who did nothing wrong. I complain about a rigged election. Elon, what's happened is unbelievable. You have from Africa, uh, from the Congo, they're coming from the Congo. And 22 people came in from the Congo recently and they're murderers and they're dropped. They, they drop them. They take them out of jails, which is very expensive, you know, to maintain the jails. Although they don't do too much maintaining, I can tell you. But they take them out of jails, prisons. They take them out and they bring them to the United States. They deposit them in the United States and say, don't ever come back or you're going to be executed. And they don't want to come back, but uh, they won't come back. Sure. But but they're coming from Africa. They're coming from Asia. They're coming from the Middle East. They're coming from South America. Well, they're Earth, coming from rest everywhere. Of Earth, basically. And there are a lot of really yeah, bad on ones. It's, uh, just, uh, it's, just, it's just an everywhere on Earth uh, thing. And it's just, it's just not possible for the United States to absorb you know, everyone from Earth or, or, you know, even a few percent of the rest of Earth is just not possible. So, well, Elon, we're going to have, uh, just, to, that's, that's, uh, just yeah. to finish this up, we're going to have the largest deportation in history of this country. And we have no choice. Otherwise, we're going to have a country, what, they're, what they've done to our country. Think of it uh, with, with, you know, in Venezuela and in some of these other countries, crime is down 50, 60, 70, 80 percent. And you would be the same. You would have, you would have, yeah, yeah. I'll tell you what, Venezuela has not gotten rid of all of them. They've gotten rid of about 70% of their really bad people. Their jails are about 50% uh, put into the United States. The same with other countries. Sure. Some are at 30%, some are at 50%. They're all different. But the bottom line is they're all going to be at 100%. Why wouldn't you put 100% of it? Yeah. And they're doing it right now while this third rate phony candidate. Don't forget, I beat I beat Biden. Uh, he failed in the debate miserably. And, you know, some people said, oh, gee, it's too bad. It's too bad he did so badly. Or I did well in the debate. You know, the first night they said, wow, one of the people at CNN said that was the greatest debate performance I've ever witnessed. And then two days later, they didn't talk about that. They just said he was bad. But that's OK. That's the way I get treated. And I don't mind that at all. What I can tell you is this. It, we cannot have a Democrat. We cannot have her. She's incompetent. She's as bad as Biden it's, in a different. Yeah. Look, she hasn't done an interview I mean, since this whole yeah. uh, scam started. Oh. And and say what you want. This yeah. was a coup. This was a coup of a president of the United States. He didn't want to leave. And they said, we can do it the nice yeah. way or we can do it the no. hard way. Yeah. No, I mean, they just took him out back behind the shed and basically shot him. You know, oh, what they did him. with this guy. So, and I'm no yeah. fan of his. And he was a horrible president, the worst president in history. And one of the reasons he was so bad, first of all, the Israeli attack would have never happened. Russia would never have attacked Ukraine and we'd have no inflation. And we wouldn't have had the Afghanistan mess, if you think of it. Well, and we wouldn't have had Afghanistan. Yeah. But we think of well, it. We, yeah. we, we, you take a few of those events away and we have a different world. We would also have no, no, no you're, inflation yeah. was caused by oil. Yeah, no, no. You, you're, you're, I think you make an excellent point here, which is that um, when other countries can, you know, that that are, you know, are thinking about invading or doing bad things, uh, when they're thinking about that, they're thinking about okay, who, what's the American president going to do, and uh, do they fear the American president, uh, or is there someone they they do not respect or and do not fear, and I think they they do they do they would. They have to rightfully be, I mean, but, you know, look, look at that, the, the footage of the assassination. They're like, OK, you know, uh, President Trump is, is, is like, don't mess with me. I mean, that's like, whereas I think people are, are not going to be and they obviously have not been at all intimidated by by Biden. And they certainly will not be intimidated by, by Kamala. And you have to really think of that in the context of global security. Um, that's. That that if the if the American president is someone someone that like you know evil dictators are scared of that makes a huge difference to the security of the world. So I had a good relationship with Putin despite the Russia 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 hoax that lasted for over two years just a hoax created by Hillary Clinton and uh, Adam Shifty Schiff some just bad people you know just sick people. Frankly, I mean, Schiff, Schiff is a sick person. He's going to end up probably being a senator. It's hard to believe. The whole thing is hard to believe. But 
uh, the, you know, they put our country in danger with that stuff, too. They actually, when they make up stories and you have to fight your way out of it for a long time. But I know Putin very well. I got along with him very well. He respected me. And it's just one of those things. And he would we would talk a lot about Ukraine. It was the apple of his eye. But I said, don't ever do it. Don't ever do it. You know, I shut down Nord Stream, too. That was the big oil pipeline, the biggest, I think, the biggest pipeline in the world going all over Europe. I shut it down. Biden came. And then they say, yeah. I, I, you know, I was I loved Russia. I was a friend of Putin and I loved Russia. No, he actually said to me one time, he said, if you're my friend, I'd hate to see you as an enemy. I shut down his pipeline, the biggest pipeline. They were looking at that yeah. to fund. And this this pathetic president gets in there. And the first thing he did, one of the early things he did is he shut down. He, he shut down Keystone XL pipeline, which is our pipeline that would have employed forty eight thousand people, pipeline workers, shuts it down. That was, uh, you know, a massive job that Obama refused to allow. Yeah. I allowed it in my first week because it was jobs and it moved oil. And by the way, in a much more environmentally friendly way, it's underground. It's not a truck that catches on fire or a train that catches on fire. But think of it. He shut down the uh, XL pipeline, the Keystone XL pipeline. Yeah. He shuts that down. And he approves the Russian pipeline. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't make any right? sense. <laughs> it's like it's inconsistent. Um, certainly, the but I mean, I, I think it's just worth emphasizing, to, you know, to listeners the that the the, the 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 immense importance of of whether the United States president is intimidating or not intimidating, um, and how much that matters to global security, um, because uh, there's some real tough characters out there, and if they don't think the American president is tough they will do what they want to do i know every one um, of and them and that puts all, that that, put, that it puts the yeah. whole world in danger elon i know every one it's of them and deal. i know them well i know putin yeah. i know president xi i know kim jong-un of north korea i know every one of them and let me tell you people will say oh this is terrible he said i'm not saying anything good or bad they're at the top of their game they're tough they're smart they're vicious and they're going to protect their country, whether they love their country. They probably do. It's just a different form of love. But they're going to protect their country. But these yeah. are tough people at the top of their game. And when they see a Kamala or when they see uh, a Biden, Sleepy Joe, they can't even believe yeah. it. They can't believe this happened. The, all the stuff that you're seeing now, all the horror that you look at Israel, they're all waiting for an attack from Iran. Iran would not be attacking, believe me. You know, when I was there and I say it with respect, because I think we would have been good with Iran. I don't want to do anything bad to Iran, but they knew not to mess around. Iran was broke because I told China, if you buy from Iran oil, it's all about the oil. That's where the money is. But if you buy oil from Iran, you're not going to do any business with the United States. And I meant it. And they said, we'll yeah, pass. Yeah. They didn't buy oil. Other countries, likewise, sure. you want to buy, you're not doing business with the United States. And they, they were at a point where they were they had no money for Hamas. They had no money for Hezbollah. They had no money for any of these instruments of terror. And it was amazing. In fact, there were articles when I was leaving, which is hard to believe, actually, especially when you look at what's happened to our country. Our country is so bad right now. It's such a different place. We were respected. Think of it. Four years ago, we were so respected to a point where when I said don't buy oil, they didn't buy oil. But they had no money, yeah, yeah. and Israel would have never been attacked. It, zero chance. And again, I said to Vladimir Putin, I said, don't do it. You can't do it, Vladimir. You do it. It's going to be a bad day. You cannot do it. And I told him things that what I do, and he said, no way. And I said, way. And you know, it's the last time we ever had the conversation. He would he would never have done. I got along well with him. I hope to get along with, well with him again. You know, getting along well with them is a good thing, not a bad thing. I got along well with yeah. Kim Jong Un when I met with President Obama just before entering. You know, it's a sort of a ritual, and I sat down with him and we talked. It was supposed to be for a very short period of time. It turned out to be a long period of time. I said, "What's the biggest problem?" He said, "North Korea." I had that problem worked out very quickly. It was nasty at the beginning with Rocket Man and. You know all the different things, yeah. but all of a sudden I got so, a call. So, so some, so those were some epic tweets, by the way. Yeah, they those were. were like, no, they were actually... epic. Everything he said, he said that he has a red button on his desk. I said, I have a red button on my desk too, but my red button is much bigger, and my red button works. 
And then I called him yeah. Little Rocket Man of Little Rocket Man. Anyway, <laughs> here's the bottom line. All of a sudden, I got a call from him. And they said they want to meet. They want to meet me. And we met, yeah. as you remember, we met in Singapore. We met also in Vietnam. And uh, I got along with them great. We yeah. were in no danger. It, but President yeah. Obama, because, President Obama there was, there, thought there we were going to end up yeah. in a war, a nuclear war with him. And let me tell you, he's yeah, got a lot true. of nuclear stuff, it's, too. Exactly. He's got plenty of nuclear. It's, he can do plenty of damage. It's, 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 so. Yes. I mean, it's because, you know, I mean, people like, like, Kim, Kim, you know, Kim Jong Un. They respond to strength, yeah. not weakness. Well, and, he, uh, and, and he and I, and got a, he and I had a good strength, relationship. They, you know, you're, remember I yeah. remember I met him and and we walked onto his land. Nobody ever walked onto his land before. I walked onto. I wouldn't say <laughs> yeah. let's bring up cool. Secret Service again. I wouldn't say they were thrilled when I did that. I walked onto his land, and uh, it was it was an amazing period. But we were not in danger with him because of me. You know, I always yeah. say that we have enemies on the outside and we have enemies on the inside. We have some really bad people in our government and people that are, and controlling of the people. I mean, I mentioned names, but I, I don't, I really don't want to give them the credit, but we have some really bad, and I say they're more dangerous than Russia and China. If, if you have a, a smart president, a president that gets it, we are not in danger from those countries because they need us and they need our help. I mean, we forced Obama, if you think about it, Obama and Biden and Bush to a certain extent, in all fairness, forced Russia and China together. And if you're a history student, the first thing you learn is you cannot let Russia and China align. But then they also got, if you take a look, Iran and they have North Korea. That's, you know, they call it the access of evil in the old days. You had the access of evil. Here we have a modern day access of evil. These are powerful countries, very heavy nuclear, which is the biggest threat. Yeah. You know, the biggest threat is not global warming, where the ocean's going to rise one one eighth of an inch over the next four hundred years. The big and you'll have more you'll have more oceanfront property, right? The biggest threat is not that. The biggest threat is nuclear warming, because we have five countries well, now that yeah. have significant nuclear power, and we have to not allow anything to happen with stupid people like Biden. You know, Biden uh, did something with Russia. Uh, there was no chance of him ever going in. And when I left, and then I, then after I left, they started forming big armies on their, on the border with Ukraine, right? And I looked at that, and I thought he was doing that because Putin's a good negotiator. I thought he was doing that to negotiate. But then Biden started saying such stupid things. For instance, he said that uh, it can be a NATO country. Now, put, Russia, for for as long as there's been NATO, has said, we're never going to agree to that. And we go right up front and say that. And we did things and said things through this president with a low IQ, very low IQ. He had a low IQ 30 years ago, by the way, but now he might not even have a IQ at all. There is no, there's nothing on the board that goes this low. He said things that were so stupid that that, that war would have been, that war had zero chance of happening if I were there. Zero chance. He was saying yeah. everything yeah. the opposite. Everything the opposite. And it's so sad because many more people have been killed in Ukraine than you read about. You don't read about how bloody it is and how deserted. Sure. Hey, look, just in the two armies, you lost a half a million people. And, yeah. uh, and you no, know, Ukraine's true. having a hard time. Ukraine, I don't know if you saw yeah. the article recently, and it's true. You don't hear the true story. But if you think about it, uh, Russia's gone, you know, Russia defeated Germany with us and they defeated Napoleon. You know, they've been around a long time. They're a big fighting force yeah, so, and it's very unfair. And Ukraine now doesn't have enough men. They're now using young men and very old men to fight. And it's, it, we're in a very bad position and I'm not going to blame exclusively, but I can tell you, I could have stopped that. And a smart president could have stopped that. It wouldn't have happened. But we had a, we had yeah. a man that actually made it it made it more prevalent. It 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 was so bad the words that he was using, the stupid threats coming from a stupid face that that he was using. I said this guy's going to cause us a war. He's going to cause us. And let me tell you, yeah, it can yeah. lead to World War Three. That can lead to World War Three. The Middle East can lead to. We have numerous places that could end up in yeah. a World War Three right now for no reason whatsoever. No, I, think, I think you're right. 
I, I think I think people under underrate the risk of World War Three, and it's just the the you know when when you're looking at the risk of global thermonuclear warfare, it's game over for humanity, and you know that's it's something that people have I think after the end of the Cold War, people have become complacent about, but they actually have forgotten that there are currently a lot of nuclear missiles that that, that are that that have targeting parameters for the United States from 100%. other countries. And one of the things and, we're going to do uh, is we're going to build yeah. an Iron Dome over us. We're, you know, Israel has it. We're going to have the best Iron Dome in the world. We need it. And we're going to make it all in the United States. But we're going to have we're going to have protection because it just takes one maniac to, you know, start something. We're going to have protection and we're going to have. Why shouldn't we have an Iron Dome? Israel has one. Some other places yeah. have one that nobody even knows about, frankly. But uh, Israel has it. We're going to have an Iron Dome. But, you know, with all of that being said, to me, that's so important, the most important. But with all of that being said, the election's coming up and the people want to hear about the economy and the fact that Absolutely they can't sure. buy groceries because they don't have enough money to buy groceries. The inflation has killed them. Food prices are up 50, 60, even 100 percent in some cases. And this this stupid administration allowed this to happen. And it's a shame. And that's the thing that people most care about, in my opinion. They care about the border a lot. And we discuss the border at great length. And it's nice to have yeah, a forum yeah. like this where I can discuss something at length. And by the way, you think Biden could do this interview? Do you think that Kamala <laughs> could do this interview? They would take a pass no, on you. No, they could not. So the, the, they don't need Elon. They don't need Elon screaming out questions. It's it's pretty sad when you think that somebody that does this for a living can't answer a question or is afraid to do an interview. And in her case, with a very friendly interview, she's got all friendly interviewers. It's pretty. Yes, good. absolutely. But the big thing now is the economy, well, Elon. Yeah. And as much as. Yeah. I mean, I view nuclear as the single most important thing, but a lot of people don't. A lot of people don't understand that. But it doesn't have to. If I understand that, that's all you need, because if I was president, you're not going to have that kind of a problem. But. The, the thing that they really is making them angry is what Kamala and Biden have allowed to happen to the economy. It's a disaster with inflation. The inflation, it yeah. doesn't matter what you make. The inflation has eaten you alive. If you're a worker or if you're a, a uh, just a, a middle income person, you can't afford, you know, four years ago, five years ago, people were saving a lot of money. Today they're using yeah. all their money and borrowing money just to live. It's it's a horrible thing right. that's happening, and we'll end that quickly. Well, I think a lot of uh, yeah, a, a, a lot of people just don't understand, don't understand where inflation comes from. Um, inflation comes from government overspending because the checks never bounce when it's written by the government. So if the if the, if the government uh, spends far more than it brings in, that increases the money supply. And if the money supply increases faster than the rate of goods and services, that's, that's right. inflation. Um, so, so really, we need to have uh, we, we need to reduce our government spending, um, and we need to re-examine. I think we I think we need like a government efficiency commission to say like, hey, where are we spending money that's sensible? Where is it not sensible? Right. Um, and and we need to live within our our means. We we we're, we're currently adding, uh, I think, a trillion dollars to the deficit uh, every roughly right. every hundred days. That's right. Um, and you know the the interest payments on the national debt have now exceed the defense budget. It's a, on the order of a trillion dollars. It's interest, and it's and it keeps it keeps yeah. growing. I rebuilt our military, largely rebuilt our military. Did a great job on it, which was so important. You know, we had jets, we had fighters that were, uh, and bombers that were seventy years old, and we we did a great job in that. Then we, by the way, then we gave eighty five billion of it to, back to Afghanistan, if you can believe it. We gave them eighty five billion. You know, they're one of the largest sellers yeah. of military equipment in the world. They're selling what we gave them. That was one of the most embarrassing days in the history of our country. But uh, if you think about, go, let's go back to the uh, the economy. We have to bring energy yeah. prices down. Energy started it. The price of gasoline. Now, your cars don't require too much gasoline. So, you know, you're, you have a good, and you do make a great product, I have to say. I have to be honest with uh, you. Thank that you. doesn't mean everybody should have an electric car, but these are minor details. But you, your product is incredible. But, but the thank gasoline, you. Elon, is the, the, the cost of energy. Not only gasoline, it's the cost of heating your house and cooling your house. That sure. has to come down. It, it's gone up 100%, 150 and 200%. That has to come down. When that comes down, and we're going to yeah. drill, baby, drill. You know, they stopped drilling, and then 
they went back to drilling because they went, went back to the Trump policy. But if they won the day after they get into office, we're going to this country will go out of business because they're going to go to an energy policy that's not sustainable wind and different things. You're not going to have anything. Yeah. And and I know you're a big fan of the AI. <laughs> and I have to say yeah. that AI, and this is shocking to me, but AI requires twice the energy that the country already produces for everything. So you're going to have to build, we're going to have to build a lot of energy if our country will be competitive with China, because that's our primary competitor for this on the AI. You're sure. going to need a lot of electricity. Well, I mean, you're going to need tremendous yeah. electricity, like almost double what we produce now for the whole country, if you can believe it. Sure. Um, well, just going, you know, back to this, like the this, this, this basic thing, which that people try to make it sound complicated, but it's not. But inflation is caused by government overspending. Right. Um, would, would you would you agree that that we need to take a look at government spending yes. and 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 have perhaps a, a government efficiency commission uh, that that just look, tries to make the spending sensible and so the country lives within its means, just like a, just like a person. The does. waste is incredible, and it's it, nobody negotiates prices. Uh, you used to have a lot of people making jets, and you end up with two companies, and they'll probably try and merge at some point. You, you, I mean, I I went through it. Like Air Force, just a, a thing like Air Force One. One of the first documents they asked me to sign, a general walks said, sir, would you please sign this document? And what is it? Air Force One, that's with Boeing, which is basically two planes, two 747s. And the price was $5.7 yeah. $5. billion for two planes. Now, oh, wow. now they're highly sophisticated. <laughs> that's insane. They're even nicer than your plane, okay? But much more sophisticated. They're very, I won't say what's on it, but they got a lot of stuff on it. Anyway, but it's 5.7. I, Listen, that's a crazy it's number. It's a crazy number. But I said, I'm not going to pay 5.7. I'm not going to do it. I said, who made the deal? Obama and his people. I said, well, then I know the deal's no good. I'm not going to do it. And over a course of about four weeks, by my saying I'm not going to do it, I got the price reduced by $1.6 billion for the exact same plane, other than we had a nicer paint job, if you want to know the truth. But for the exact same plane, I got, I saved one. And I said to Boeing, Man, you guys must make a lot of money if you can reduce the price by that. But now what I do hear is that they're going back to the uh, Biden administration and wanting big cost overruns, you know, because they see these dopey suckers in there and they'll end up getting uh, some of the money back. But I shaved it by $1.6 billion for the exact same plan. And, and you can now take that and multiply that out times thousands of other exactly. items. Multiply and, it by yeah, the numbers are and, yeah. astronomical. Yeah. I agree with you. Well, uh, I mean, if so, so I mean, I mean, I, I think it would be great to just have a government efficiency commission that takes a look at, uh, at at these things and and just ensures that the taxpayer money, the, the taxpayers' hard-earned money, is spent in a good way. Um, and and I, and I'd I'd be happy to help out on such a commission. I'd if, love it if it were formed. Well, you you're the greatest cutter. I mean, I look at what you do. You walk in and you just say, you want to quit? They go <laughs> yeah. on strike. They, I won't mention the name of the company, but they go on strike and you say, that's okay. You're all gone. You're all gone. So every one of you is gone and you are the greatest. You would be very good. Oh, you would love it. But, you know, if you look at Arjun. Well, I'd be happy yeah, to help By the out. way, congratulations. Yeah. I just looked at the number of people that are listening to you and I chat. We'll call it a chat. But uh, yeah. congratulations. This is very good. I mean, it's great. It's and and you're an interesting character. You know, the uh, new head of a place called Argentina, and he was he's a big Malay you know he's he's great, and yeah. he's a big MAGA fan. You know that he ran on MAGA, and he took it to an extreme too. He 